So now we have done with the first one. Next, moving on to childhood onset epilepsy syndrome. I, I will introduce four examples of epilepsy syndromes. Childhood absence epilepsy, CAE. This syndrome is characterized by onset of frequent absence seizures between the ages of 2 to 12 years, which peaks at the age of 5 to 6 years. The development and cognition are typically normal. However, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and learning difficulty may occur. Here's a point of attention. If the disease onset below 4 years of age, glucose transporter disorders should be considered. Absence seizures are typically frequent, could be daily or even multiple times in a day, and brief with an average of 10 seconds. The awareness or responsiveness are usually severely impaired. There also may be generalized tonic-clonic seizure that usually seen in adolescence. So let's take a look at the EEG of the childhood absence epilepsy. The background is usually normal. Occipital intermittent rhythmic delta activity, OIDA, may be seen in one third of cases. As highlighted in the red box, there are symmetric bursts of rhythmic sinusoidal delta activity over the bilateral occipital region. Studies show that the frequency of OIDA in CAE generally faster about 3 to 4 Hz than in localization related epilepsy, which is about 2 to 3 Hz. OIDA can be asymmetric in some patients. This slide shows over here an OIDA over left occipital region. Generalized spike and waves are seen in the interictal EEG. These are brief usually less than 2 seconds and most commonly seen in sleep. The epileptiform discharge could be provoked by several conditions, including sleep or sleep deprivation, hyperventilation, and photic stimulation. This slide and the next slide show the epileptiform discharge is enhanced by sleep. So this is an awake EEG which showed normal background and hardly any epileptiform discharge. During sleep, there are bursts of generalized spike waves. Next, we talk about the ictal pattern. EEG abnormality and absence seizures are provoked by hyperventilation. This patient was doing hyperventilation absence seizure occur and the EEG showed concomitant generalized 3 Hz spike and wave. But keep in mind, if hyperventilation is poorly performed, ictal attack or generalized spike and wave may not be triggered. Childhood absence epilepsy is a genetic generalized epilepsy that should be considered in an otherwise normal child with onset of frequent absence seizures especially in 5 to 6 years of ages. The background activity is normal. Occipi occipital intermittent rhythmic delta activity OIDA, may be seen in one third of cases. EEG abnormality and absent seizures are provoked by hyperventilation. Regular 3 Hz generalized spike and waves associated with absent seizures. The second example is Panatopoulos syndrome, which is characterized by onset of seizures peaks at 3 to 6 years of age. Development and cognition are normal. The mandatory seizure type for this syndrome is the focal autonomic seizure. The autonomic features are mainly gastrointestinal including nausea and vomiting, which could be mistaken for acute gastroenteritis. Two-thirds of seizures starts in sleep. The seizure often prolonged. As the seizure evolves, loss of consciousness, eye deviation, and hemiconvulsion may occur. The seizure is self-limiting and usually resolved by reaching adolescence. Again, let's look at the EEG. This slide shows 
interictal EEG in five patients with pentatopolar syndrome separated by vertical lines. All have similar clinical features. However, as you can see over here, the spikes are localized in either occipital, central temporal area, or frontal area, or they are multifocal and may appear as clone-like. Short bursts of generalized discharges of slow waves with small spikes over here are sometimes an interictal EEG feature. Eye closure may activate occipital spikes. EEG anomaly is enhanced by sleep deprivation and by sleep. To sum up for the Penatopolis syndrome, this syndrome is characterized by the onset in early childhood and focal autonomic seizures that are often prolonged and most commonly occur during sleep. Seizures are self-limiting with remission typically within a few years from onset. The background is normal, but multifocal high voltage spikes or sharp and slow waves are seen in majority of patients. These often are present in different focal areas on sequential EEGs. All focal brain regions may be affected, but abnormality in posterior region is more common. Eye closure, which is elim elimination of central vision and fixation of sensitivity, may activate occipital spikes. So let's go to the third example of childhood onset epilepsy, childhood occipital epilepsy, gastroctite. This syndrome is characterized by onset of seizures between 15 months of age and 19 years of age and which peaks at 8 to 9 years. Focal sensory visual seizures occur from awake states which have rapid onset, brief, and may be frequent without treatment. Typically, the patient may describe the visual phenomena as small multicolored circles and then this may be followed by deviation of eyes. Remission occurs in about 50-60% to 60 of patients within 2-4 to four years after onset. Dramatic response to carbamazepine is seen in more than 90% of patients. Now here is the EEG reading. The background is often normal. Occipital spike or spike wave occur in majority but may only occur in sleep EEG. Another important thing, fixation of sensitivity is a characteristic EEG finding in this syndrome. As highlighted by the red box here, the epileptiform discharges persist throughout the eye closed state and later the epileptiform discharges disappeared with eye opening. However, the discharges recur after elimination of the central fixation by placing a sheet of white paper in front of the eye with eyes opening. Here, I want to mention a bit about fixation of sensitivity. Fixation of sensitivity is seizure epileptiform discharges on EEG which induced by the elimination of central vision and fixation. It is continuous, persists throughout the eye closed state, and disappeared with eye opening. However, the discharges recur with the elimination of central fixation, which is unaffected by eye closure or opening. It is most commonly seen in idiopathic childhood occipital epilepsies, including gastrotype and pentatopolar syndrome, but may also be observed in cases of symptomatic or cryptogenic focal and generalized epilepsies, and even in asymptomatic non-epileptic individuals. To sum up, childhood occipital epilepsy, gastrotype, is a self-limiting childhood epilepsy with onset in later childhood. The patient have focal sensory visual seizure and are usually easily controlled and remission of seizure occurs within 2-4 to four years of onset. 
The EEG background is normal. Occipital spike or spike and wave is seen in the interictal EEG of the majority, but may only occur in the slip EEG. Although central temporal, spike, frontal, or generalized spike and wave may coexist. Fixation of sensitivity is seen in about 20 to 90 percent of patients. EEG abnormality is enhanced by sleep deprivation or by sleep. Next, I'll talk about the fourth and also the last examples of childhood onset epilepsy. Childhood epilepsy with central temporal spikes, or previously also known as Rolandic epilepsy. This syndrome is characterized by onset of seizures between 3 to 14 years, which peaks at 8 to 9 years. Development and cognition prior to onset of seizure is normal. During the course of the active epilepsy, behavior and neuropsychological deficits may be found, particularly in language and executive functioning. These deficits improve when seizure remits. The mandatory seizures are seizures with frontal parietal opercular features, with hemifacial including lip, mouth and tongue clonic movements, laryngeal symptoms, articulation difficulty, swallowing and hypersalivation. Seizures are typically brief and occur in nocturnal. The seizure may involve two clonic activity in the ipsilateral upper limbs or to forecoat bilateral tonic clonic seizure. Seizures usually resolved by reaching adolescence. So let's see the EEG. The background, the background is normal. But as you can see in this EEG, there are simultaneous maximum negativity in central temporal electrodes and maximum positivity frontally, which considered as horizontal dipoles. This and the next slide show epileptiform discharges enhanced in sleep. As we can see in this slide, which is an awake EEG, the background is normal and there is no epileptiform discharge. This slide showed a sleep EEG of the same patient. There is frequent epileptiform discharges over bilateral central temporal areas. Childhood epilepsy with central temporal spikes, also previously known as Rolandic epilepsy, is a self-limiting epilepsy seen in children in their early school years. The seizures are brief, frontal parietal opercular features that may evolve to focal to bilateral tonic-clonic seizure occur nocturnally. The EEG shows a normal background with high amplitude central temporal sharp waves of spike which are activated with drowsiness and sleep.